you may be familiar with the horizontal motion formula, distance equals rate times time. That formula involves the use of linear equations. Well, in this lesson, we're looking at the vertical motion formula, and it involves the use of quadratic equations. The vertical motion formula is used when objects are thrown or in some other way projected up from the ground, and it helps track the distance from the ground based on the time that the ball or other object is in the air as it goes up and comes back down. Well, D stands for the distance in meters above or below the starting point. R is the initial upward velocity in meters per second. And T is time in seconds since the object was released. So here's an example. A person standing on the ground throws a ball upward with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And that means that when it leaves the person's hand, it's going 40 meters per second. But since it's thrown upwards, gravity takes effect, and the ball slows down constantly until it gets to as high as it'll go, and then it starts falling back to the ground, speeding up constantly as it comes back to the ground. And we're going to make a little chart, and we're going to see how, what the distance is after one second, then two seconds, and all the way to eight seconds. So we're plugging in 40 for R, and in the first line, 1 for t. And we're doing the arithmetic, and we get the distance is 35 meters. Then we keep 40 for r in all of these calculations. But in the second line, we put 2, for 2 seconds in for t. We do the arithmetic, we get 60 meters off the ground. And then after 3 seconds, you can see it's 75 meters off the ground. And after 4 seconds, it's 80 meters off the ground. And again, as the ball's going up, it's slowing down. It covers 35 meters in the first second, 25 meters in the second second, 15 meters in the third second, and just 5 meters in the fourth second. And then we plug 5 in for the fifth second, and now we realize that it started back down because it's lower than it was after 4 seconds, and it's gone 5 meters back down. And then after 6 seconds, it's 60 meters off the ground, and then 35 meters after 7 seconds, and then you can check the arithmetic, but it's back on the ground at 0 meters after 8 seconds. Well, here's a common sketch used for a problem like this. We see our guy getting ready to throw the ball, and we often make an arch like this to show that the ball comes up and it comes back down. It's pretty hard to throw a ball straight up and have it come down exactly where it lands, but sometimes we get confused and we think of the part in the blue segment as a horizontal distance, which it's not. We're not really concerned about that. We're just concerned about the red arch, how high the ball is off the ground. So let's look at our table. And our table told us that after one second, the ball was there at 35 meters. And there's two seconds, 60 meters. Three seconds, 75 meters. It's up at the top at four seconds, starting back down in five and then 60 meters off the ground in 6 seconds, 35 meters off the ground at 7 seconds, and back down to the ground after 8 seconds. And you can see that it takes the same amount of time to get up as it does to come down, which is half of the total time. So 4 seconds is the middle point at the very top, and this ball got 80 meters off the ground. Well, let's answer a few questions about this problem. Our first question is, how long will it take the ball to hit the ground? Well, we already know 8 seconds, but we're going to look at it a different way. We're going to put 0 in for the distance, because the ground is at 0 meters, because that's where the ball was thrown from. So we put 0 in for D, we still have 40 in for R, and we're going to solve for T. And This is a quadratic equation, and we're using factoring. So we break it into two parts. Either t has to be 0, or 40 minus 5t is 0. And we know that if t is equal to 0, well, that's the starting point before the ball was thrown. So we're not concerned about that. It's the second equation that tells us how many seconds it was in the air. We add 5t to both sides, divide by 5, and we get 8. We already knew that, but we wanted to take a look at it a different way. It will take 8 seconds for this ball to reach the ground. 
Well, here's one we haven't answered yet. We know how high it'll be after one second or two seconds or three seconds, but now we want to know how high will it be after 6.5 seconds. So in this problem, we don't know what D is, but we know what R is, and we've plugged in 6.5 seconds for T. So we just plug it in. We can use a calculator. We do the arithmetic. And we get that it's 48.75 meters off the ground after six and a half seconds. And now we've gone back to our sketch. We've put the six and a half seconds and the 48.75 meters in green. And there it is. That makes sense. It's in between where it was after six seconds and seven seconds. And it's on the way down at the six and a half second mark. And here's another question. We already know the answer. But I want to show you what it looks like if we use a quadratic equation. The new question is, how many seconds will it take for the ball to be 100 meters off the ground? Well, we already know that it only gets to 80 meters. But let's look what happens if we solve it this way. And we assume that the ball can get to 100 meters. So we put 100 in for d. We still have 40 for our initial velocity. A little more complicated to solve this quadratic equation. We added 5t to both sides. Added negative 40t to both sides, factored out the 5, divided both sides by 5, and now we have a trinomial t squared minus 8t plus 20 is equal to 0. It can't be factored. So we plug those values. A is 1, B is negative 8, C is 20. Plug it into the quadratic formula. We need more space, so we've recopied our work. We do the arithmetic, and then we look at the discriminant. It's negative. And we can stop right there. Because the discriminant is negative, it means there is no answer. And in this case, no answer means that the ball never reaches 100 meters off the ground. Well, it's time for a new problem. A diver dives from a 10-meter platform by jumping up before coming back down to the water. If the diver took 1.9 seconds to get into the water, what was her initial upward velocity? Well, here's a little sketch of the platform. And here's what it might look like. We know that since it's a platform dive, the diver can't really jump very high. So the diver's not going to get much higher than the platform. And in this case, we're going to call the platform zero meters because that's where the jump starts. And the platform, because it's a 10 meter platform, that means it's 10 meters down to the water. So since the water's below the starting point, we're going to call the water negative 10 meters. So we plug the water level, negative 10, in for D, and the time to get to the water, 1.9 seconds, in for T. And again, we do some arithmetic. And now we're going to add 18.05 to both sides and then divide both sides by 1.9 and round off that the initial velocity is about 4.24 meters per second. And now we'll answer another question. How long will it take for the diver to be even with the platform on the way down? Well, the platform's at zero meters, so we plug in zero for D. We still have our initial upward velocity of 4.25. We factor this quadratic equation. And once again, the zero equals T is the starting point. But we want to know on the way down, when is the diver back even with the platform at zero meters? We add 5t to both sides and divide by 5, and we get that it's about 0.848 seconds, or just a little less than a second, to get even with the platform on the way down on this 1.9 second dive. And then our final question is, what is the highest point the diver will get from the surface of the water? Well, that's, of course, why we answered the previous question. Because as we look at our sketch, we remember from the previous problem that it takes the same amount of time to go up as it is to go down. So if we take the time it took to get even with the platform, we divide that by 2 to get the point at the top of the dive. So that's 0.424 seconds to get to the top of the dive. And then we're going to plug 0.424 seconds in for the time. We still have our initial upward velocity at 4.24. We do some arithmetic, as shown. And then we get that the distance above the platform is 0.899 meters, or let's round it off to 9 tenths of a meter. And the question is, 
How high is that relative to the water? So if it's nine tenths of a meter above the platform, the diver is 10.9 meters above the water. The formula D is equal to RT minus 5T squared is often used when working with vertical motion. The rate R is meters per second, so the distance D is in meters, and the time T is in seconds. The formula is a quadratic equation. A related formula is D is equal to RT minus 16T squared, where the rate is given in feet per second.